they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clearing the. Hey guys, we're on a new episode of Talk of the Town. Today we have a special guest. One of the hottest producers in the city right now. Right? Would you like would you claim so. the crown or no? Nah, 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 nah. Of course not. There's a lot of there's a lot of great, great producers. <laughs> I said one of the there. hottest, no? Yeah, 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 for sure. But then okay. you said the crown, so. I'm done like, are you <laughs> accepting the award? <laughs> oh, okay, fine. I, I do. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so this is your first official on camera interview. Yes. Are you one of those producers that be wanting to be like low key behind the scenes? Um, no, but also at the same time, I don't really care to be in the spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of producers don't be trying to show their face and stuff. No, no, I'm not like one of those like mysterious people. Uh, I definitely am not like a big picture taker, but mm -hmm. my actual like personality, I'm not really on no mysterious not shit. Not too much, too much. No. All right, so I'm asking you a couple questions to say the first thing that comes to mind. Most used curse word. Like for me? Yeah. Fuck, probably. Favorite artist currently? Favorite artist currently? Currently, like today. Um, Not every day your mood changed, but like today. I like Sexy Red this summer. She dropped a lot of really good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Heard you. Okay. Um, what song do you listen to for motivation? Um, a lot, but today was self control by NBA Youngboy. That's a super motivational super, one right super there. Super shout to Youngboy. All right, um, best, where are you from? Brooklyn. Best thing about your hometown? <laughs> um, it's in New York City. What's the best thing about Brooklyn? Come on, don't do that. Um, you got good shit. Yeah, I know, but the best thing about it, I don't know, I guess the, um, the diversity, I would say. Diversity? Yeah. Okay, um, favorite app on your phone? Um, Twitter or X. <laughs> X, word. <laughs> um, if you could ask the government one thing, what would it be? If I could ask just the overall government. Overall government, one thing, what would it be? Uh, I don't really, I don't really care about the government, so like, I don't know who killed JFK, I don't know. Who killed Martin Luther King? Who killed who killed everybody? Everybody, right? Um, at what age do you want to retire? Um I don't know. I'm I'm kinda open to working until I die. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool First I heard that. Um I mean like, you know, towards the end of life it'll be more like chilled yeah. supervisional work, not like labor, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Are you worried about like your ears and stuff? Being that you listen to music all day, or you don't feel like? Um, I don't listen to, um, I don't play music very loud in the studio, mm. and I do wear earplugs in, in really loud studios sometimes. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because I seen, um, I was, when I interviewed Wayne or whatever, he was like, a, when he in a car, he don't play music because he done heard music all day. Well, yes, yeah, I, I still listen like, to music. Okay. I, I, I just listen to mostly. Like if I'm working all day on rap music, I'll listen to mostly like not rap, rap music, music in the headphone. Type yeah. shit, type shit. All right, so growing up in Brooklyn, walk us through, how was that? Um, well, okay, so an important um, like asterisk, <laughs> hold on. So an, an important asterisk is that I'm from Park Slope, Brooklyn, okay. which, you know, since this is mostly a New York City. Yeah. It's like it's like a Long Island town in the middle of actual Brooklyn. Yep, so it it's uh, like everybody kind of knows each other. It's like mm -hmm. obviously a bunch of white people and it's almost like an alternate universe from what a lot of other people think of as okay. Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, that being said, I grew up there in, you know, in the 90s when just New York City in general was a lot different. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, like I said, you know, you know, when you when you're from New York City, like I went to school in the Bronx and then I went to school in Manhattan. So I had friends in all different Not parts really of Brooklyn. Up. So my upbringing was all over the city, you know, and I think that was what was interesting about it is you would go to different parts of the city for different things, different friends, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So you get to absorb a lot of a lot of different cultures, walks of life, things like that. Right. So you traveling from the Bronx, the city now. When did you get into producing? 
Um, I got into producing probably like 10 years ago. Okay. High um, school or not? No, 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 no. College, maybe? I was, yeah, I was, I was in college. Um, I was 20, I'm 33 now, so I was probably oh, like 22. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a big thing, a big thing, I know it's very, very shocking. People say I have like Andy Milanakis disease or whatever, but um, um, I didn't get into making music very late, which I always try to use to kind of uh, encourage like a lot of the people I produce with. A lot of them will be like, oh, I'm 23 and like nothing's happened yet. And I was like, man, I, I literally didn't even make a beat until I was like, 21 or 22 years old mm, okay. so with you know with rapping there's definitely uh more of like a Age. youth matters yeah, yeah. not saying that you can't make it as an old rapper but yeah. it matters a lot more but with stuff like producing unless you want to be like a lifestyle producer or whatever you can if you if you have a good sense of what you're doing if people like so what you do they'll really like what you for do for or why you got the hunger, push yourself when you're younger, basically? Yeah, I, I would say, like, don't, I wouldn't, like, I would avoid following in my footsteps, like, probably start, like, earlier, earlier. than that. For sure, for sure. It was the circumstances of life that made me start music late, but I think my point is, like, age does matter because the younger you are, the more naturally inclined you're going to be towards things that are happening now mm -hmm. and how they affect sounds in music and other things in pop culture but yeah. i think there are people i'd like to think of myself as one of those people that just has a natural ear towards those things and i try to i try to look for the things that would be timeless or the things that would kind of relate to any era and um and i think it, you know if you have your own lane and kind of way of approaching that then people will like it right so before producing what was you into before I worked at a fish fry and I sold weed. Okay. So, okay, so like you went to college though. Yeah, I went to college for um psychology. I mean, another thing is I'm half Asian, so okay. I have a Chinese father, so I definitely had to go to college. Right, right, right. So, um, was he um not jacking the producer thing or like Um no, he wasn't like super, you know, it wasn't like the movies where it's like they're so against, like, he was pr pretty indifferent to it um, until I started making money from it. Right. And he's like, of okay, Of course, that's, that's cool. parents for you. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. So what was your first placement ever? Um, my first placement was uh, French Montana Poison off um, the Mac and Cheese Appetizer EP. Um, mm -hmm. Harry Frog got me that. Shouts to Harry Frog. He got me a lot of my first big placements. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a Lana Del Rey ultra violence sample, and uh, I al always have loved Lana, so I was glad that that could be my first my, my first sample flip that I actually placed. Okay, okay. How are you feeling about samples, though? Um, be honest. So I think that like when people say samples, um, a lot of people just think of of like that typical drill sample formula where you take a famous sample and and you don't really do too much work on it. Yeah. I think that is obviously I have the same opinion as everyone else. I think people need to start being a little more creative in, instead of trying to recreate old songs. I mean, you know, I'm obviously we're all guilty of contributing to the wave while it was going crazy, mm -hmm. but sampling itself is still my favorite form of producing. Mm. Like real sampling, you know, if you go yeah. to any album in any genre, like literally any genre, there's sampling in it. Sampling and some, and my idea of sampling, not always, but um, like purist sampling, I guess, is the concept of, of taking a sound and like reappropriate, reappropriating it in a way that mm -hmm. Like, either you don't recognize it from before or it's, like, oh, giving off a different vibe than the original right. because you've, like, rearranged the elements to, right. to kind of make it sound, to, to become, become a new thing, you know? Right. So, so, so you were sampling then. That was the first big placement as a sample. Um, yeah. Well, it was only sampling at that point, really. 
You said it was only sampling at that point? It wasn't like, um, you know, there weren't people like running, like it's not, everyone wasn't running around like using serum and like, yeah, there was like some, I'm not saying people weren't using synths, but in that era, like the backpack rap era, you know, when Wale and all, all yeah. those people were coming, it was heavy, you know, currency whiz. Those yeah. were like uh, some of my other earlier placements. They were all super sample heavy. And then the types of non-sample beats were like, you know, like Weed em Boys or like Ain't Worried About Nothing. Like those yeah. type of really like... Not too much. Real yeah, simple. yeah. Like simple trap beats. They didn't have like these insane... Samples. Yeah, loops and melodies. Yeah, like loop makers weren't a thing yet. Right, right, right. You know. So I mean, so you've been producing from then to now. Do you feel like your job, I guess, is a little bit easier now with all the softwares, or do you make it like, or does it make it like everybody's trying to produce now? So it's hard to like. What do you think? Uh, um, I think every era like presents its new challenges. Mm. Obviously, okay. like. Yeah, when software gets easier to use, it becomes a more successful, I mean, accessible path. path so yeah. you get a lot more producers, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I still do think that making beats and sending it into the abyss, hoping that it'll land, is still pretty much the same as playing the lottery. And um, the people that'll like consistently get work are people that know how to get into rooms with artists and like make songs with them. So that's not really something that'll get easier via software. That's going to be, okay. that's a personal thing. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So um, getting your first placement, did you know that you definitely wanted to do that? Or was that first placement like, yeah, I'm about to go hard with this shit? No, yeah, I was working really hard before that. I was just really bad. So, <laughs> okay. um, so I wasn't even that good then, um, to be honest. I just did a good sample flip and... And Harry did the drums, and they were obviously really good. Okay, but how you met Harry, though? Selling weed. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you meet Harry, you get the placement. Are you, like, locked in at this point? Do you feel like you're better now? Like, or are what, you... What, now? But at that since, time, yeah. Um, yeah, I was definitely feeling myself. I definitely <laughs> was, thought I was good. But oh. I, I definitely knew that my strengths were still in, like, finding samples and flipping them in crazy ways. Mm -hmm. Um. And my drums still had a long way to go. Um, okay. It definitely wasn't something that came natural. Definitely back then it was, took a lot more skill to make your drums actually hit because you didn't have like all these libraries and kits of like perfect sounding drums and mm -hmm. fills and like little things that you could just do really easily now. Right. That's part of obviously like the advancement of software, making it easier, but it did, you know, it, it did force you to kind of learn the basics of mixing and and just sonics and gen like the relation of sonics in general. So, what do you feel like makes a good song? What makes a good song? Yeah, um, to you. When people like it. But that's mad general. I mean, it's about as general as the answer as the question was. No, like what makes a good song? People say. The beat is like the most important thing. Some people say the artist is the most important. But the thing is, for both of those, you know, we both can give plenty of examples of like. A good beat, bad artist. Yeah, we exactly. Like we can give a good good examples of great songs because of the beat. We can have great songs because of the artist. I think that like the consistent thing between all of them is that, you know, people like it. Okay. All right, so t tell us some of the other placements that you have. I know you got like C mass, you got like mad placements. Yeah, I mean a lot. I mean it's from um, some of the big ones. I mean yeah, from the backpack era, definitely like currency, Wiz, Wale, French Montana. Those were all thanks to Harry Fraud. He gave me a lot of um, opportunities to co-produce them with, with G Herbo as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then. A lot of placements came during the SoundCloud era where I was a pretty pretty unknown producer just because that was like a really, just a vast landscape of artists and, and producers for real. But mm -hmm. um, because they all made so much music, a lot of producers had opportunities to get a lot of placements and I was definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of Ski Masks album, mm -hmm. uh, the Stokely album. That's definitely like one Top of my... Ones. One of my prouder accomplishments, yeah, just because 
making that album, we worked together. Like we like, like went, we in. like locked in on like great conversation and mm. went outside together and wilded it out. Like it was like yeah. a real like working on something. Together. And I'm not the only person right. that worked on the project, but I'm just right. saying for my for offerings to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So does that make it better when you know the artist and it makes it easier to like get their vibes? Oh, of course, always, yeah, a hundred percent. So how do you balance that? I guess that's why they have to come to you to lock in. How do you balance like getting to know the artist versus like just making a pack for someone? I mean, it really is like circumstance. Sometimes you'll be lucky enough to be able to lock in with someone in person, but if someone asks you to send a pack, you should still take advantage of the opportunity, you know? You shouldn't okay. be like, I'm, I mean, I actually do know some people um, that are like, that are like, stand on their shit and they're like, yo, I'm, I'm only gonna lock in with them in person. And I, and I fuck with that, I do. I, I, I feel like, um, I feel like you need to have a lot of leverage as a producer to do that. For um, sure. Yes. But, uh, you know, it's, it's different things for different people, for sure. The most recent one you have, though, is Ice Spice. I feel like that's the biggest, most recent one I've seen. Yeah, for Ice sure. Spice. So how did that link up? How did that happen? Um, so you've been to Riot or, like, y'all connected later? I met Riot and Ice Spice together. Oh. Um, like, they both came to my studio. Um, and it was, it was, you know, at the time it was just as simple as, like, oh, I, I like your music. Oh, I like your beats. Y'all have a studio. <laughs> Oh, I actually like have a producer too. Can I bring him? Yeah, of course. And then they came through and, um, you know, we, we cut a couple records, um, started a couple records, like nothing okay. that ever got finished, but we all got along like really well. Mm -hmm. And um, especially me and Riot, because obviously just because we're both producers, producers like we would, yeah. we would cook up a lot and, mm -hmm. uh, and we would just go to sessions together like um, TJ cook up sessions or like Fabio, I think yeah. like B loves. This was this was this was like um, a few months before the Munch video shoot, right. and um, I don't know. Riot and Ice are just super like real Lovely. genuine people, and, mm. uh, and you know they they blew up crazy, and Riot reached out to me to work on the work on the project. So mm -hmm. you know we, we cooked up Butterfly Coup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my shit. Yeah. So um so. Did you see the superstar in her at that time, or you were still like filled it out? Yeah, there was, <laughs> there was a funny. Um, I mean, yo, I'm not gonna act like I knew she was gonna be the biggest thing on earth. Like, I don't mm -hmm. try to measure like how big. I just oh, see, see like, yeah. oh wow, this person has potential to that, go yeah. as far as, you know what I'm saying? As far yeah, as they want. You can't put a limit on it, but they got potential to go far. Yeah. Yeah, but there was a, uh, like when I met her, she a asked me like, um, what she should charge for features mm -hmm. and I was like you shouldn't really do features because like when you blow up you're gonna you're gonna regret having a bunch of random people like have videos with you mm -hmm. so um so yeah I would say I definitely I definitely believed in her for sure Early yeah both of them I mean I was really intrigued by the producer rapper duo like mm -hmm. that they were like, I wouldn't know, I don't know if duo is the right word, but just the fact that they were a team and, like, did everything yeah. together mm -hmm. and created yeah. records together, like, I, I was really, like, uh, inspired by that for sure. I mean, you locked in with a couple artists like that, right? Where you did the ski mask, you and 2-6 seem pretty locked yeah, in. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Me and Jay Critch were locked in for a long Critch time. Me and Smoke Perp were locked in yeah. for a long time. Yeah. So, of course, getting, in produ getting into producing... Of course, the creative side of it is all great, but the business side, how did you learn the business side of it all? Um, a lot of agreements. <laughs> like, you know, just but, learn over time, really. Yeah. Uh, it starts out with, like, you not understanding anything, like what publishing or masters are, mm -hmm. and then, like, you get frustrated because you're stupid and you feel like you're being taken advantage of, which you probably are, but you don't even know how. Mm -hmm. So you just get angry. Um, and then like, you know, you, I, I always say this, the first thing that any producer should get is a lawyer before a manager, definitely before a deal, get a lawyer. Cause right. you know, lawyers will help talk you through situations and things like that. But okay. yeah, Was it just there, takes experience for sure. 
Was there any records that you like didn't get what you deserved off of it or like missed out on shit? Yeah, uh, a lot. A like lot that. of them. Yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> I mean, I mean, just like any other industry, but I mean, it definitely rings true in this one a lot. You get what you get what you negotiate for. You don't necessarily get what you deserve okay. always. Right, um, right, right. So, so that's why you want to have a good lawyer and a good yeah. relationship with the people you work with. Right. So, I mean, how did you get with your team? I feel like off record, y'all pretty solid. Um, off record, um, off record really started with me just um, running a really small office studio in downtown Manhattan. And I would just pretty much engineer people for free. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even show them my beats. I would just engineer them for free. Like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if people here are familiar with Uno the Activist, but mm. um, he was in the SoundCloud era. But I engineered like half his album for no money. And it was okay. terrible, painful work. And it was literally <laughs> just so I can get like a shout out or something like that. But you know, it was stuff like that, letting people use my studio for free all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and eventually I would start charging people or I'd be like, if you want to come through, get on my beats, you know, just building things slowly like that. Mm -hmm. And then business got pretty good, um, because I had, you know, all those, uh, SoundCloud era artists coming through. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I got employees, got a staff, but my mentality was that I wanted to hire engineers that were also producers. Mm. So they could get placements also, and we could kind of build a, a collective and use the studio business to kind of make us bread so we wouldn't be, like, starving, waiting for placement check to placement check. Okay. And then, you know, um, our most first guy was Matt, Matt Marvin. Mm -hmm. And then soon uh, Eli, what the fuck, came mm -hmm. through. Zuko came through. A.O. Lucas, Hardhead, Emerald, like, a lot of the guys. Yeah. Um, and we have a ton of other um, producers, mm -hmm. too, that, that fuck with us. But it was just natural, like, having studios. Everyone kind of shares an interest of, in working all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it was just kind of came together naturally like that. Oh, so you didn't really have the... I feel like now y'all do other stuff in the studio, too, right? Like, yeah, we'll do, like, Twitch, Twitch streaming. Yeah. yeah, we'll do some Twitch streaming sometimes. Um We'll do DJing. Like, I brought CDJs, so a bunch of us got into DJing because it's a good way to, you know... Second, yeah. Yeah, have, just have, have, perform your music and be outside, kind of engaging in the other side of things instead of just being in the studio. So oh, we'll yeah. practice in the studio as well. So, I mean, so the lawyer you have, I guess is more of an off-record lawyer now, right? So people are coming to you and gaining all of these resources and knowledge or some yeah. people outsource? Well, um, like, sorry, re say that question one okay, more time. Okay, so now you're building your staff. You're teaching right. them as you go, of course. Are you, is the lawyer now for the brand off record? or No, some people have different lawyers. Okay. I encourage everyone to get the lawyer that they, that they want. Okay. Yeah, I mean, cool. some of us share a lawyer, but I, I would never like... Um, you have to, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I would never be like, you need to use this lawyer if you want to. <laughs> so, um, but some of them don't send out packs. They be like, yo, come to Off Record, let's lock in and cook up and shit. For sure. And I feel like a lot of, um, a lot of, I want to say the younger artists, Joe artists, definitely like going there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely been, we've had everybody over there. Everybody. And I think more than the space, I think it's just like they like working with the, with the, with the yeah, with the producers there for sure. Super hands on. So um, so how is that like working with, I guess the drill kids and people try to say you know, they're problematic. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, when you work with so many different people, it's like everyone's their own person. person. So it's like, some some artists are like super polite and like, can just tell they're just like, <laughs> just like discipline good people and then yeah. some people are bouncing off the wall crazy <laughs> and everything in between you know yeah. so um i think when you look at something from the outside mm -hmm. especially through the media then you're gonna make like some general Assumptions. assumption about but you know obviously the music is is rowdy and disrespectful mm -hmm. it's like pretty intentional <laughs> across the board but um yeah all the artists are 
you know. Like some artists have personality, some artists have zero personality. I will nice. not gonna name names, of course. But. <laughs> nah, of course not. So, um, so what are your thoughts on drill music right now, though? Drill music right now? Yeah. How you feeling about it? Um, I was talking to someone about this yesterday. It's obviously like um, the whole looming like hip hop is dead or drill is dead question, and I, I honestly just feel like people panic in like moments of silence, like when there's not a ton of amazing stuff going on, then then like people just like, will just jump to assuming the worst. Like, is hip hop dead? Like, it's the first year that we haven't had a number one hit. It's like, okay. Um, I think a lot of places in pop culture, movies, yeah. podcasting, like are, they're just trying to figure out what the next step is. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, yo, there was a time in the 2010s where we were like, yo, music sucks. Like, is all, are all we gonna have Drake? Like, what happens after Drake? You know what I'm saying? Like, Type it's shit. like DJ Mustard, Drake, like, what is, what's there gonna be? And then Extentacion came and, and made like the answer to Drake. And it's, it doesn't matter if you like SoundCloud music. It was the answer to like super refined, perfect Drake style music. Right. And it gave like a whole new life and it bled into all different parts of pop culture. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think just in general, pop culture is trying to figure out what the next step is. And, and, and that's fine. Like people are supposed to get frustrated and, and upset with how things are. Cause that's mm -hmm. when they actually like up with some shit. Yeah, yeah. Just get on the grind and come up with some shit. Do you feel like for the, I guess, genre to evolve, do you feel like it's more of a producer and an artist collaboration or it's more oh, of Oh, yeah. It's both sides have responsibility. I okay. think producers, um, I think, and I've, I've posted about this before, I think pr um, producers need to take responsibility for things just in general. I think... Um, Producers like to victimize themselves, like, oh, I'm just here making beats, and like, I don't know, it's like, you actually can have power as a producer, mm -hmm. you can find an artist and like, work with them from the ground and influence them and actually be able to get them to get on different kinds of beats or talk about different kinds of things. But obviously, if you're gonna sit in the comfort of your own home, make beats and email them, then you're not really gonna have much of a say in in shaping you know culture i mean like and that being said obviously it still happens like for example i think like axel had never been in the studio before mm -hmm. he was just sending right. beats and like he definitely changed the culture right. like no no question well, with the help of the artist word yeah, yeah exactly of course but but I, i'm i'm saying more as like a general, general thing, thing that i've yeah. noticed is like producers do need to get more creative like not just the artists because if artists just keep getting the same beat over and over again it's going to be hard for them to be creative for right word so um what how did you get your tag name um that's my brother vana <laughs> um that's my brother vana who me and him go back to like 2015 now um he was a uh, part of gloss gang who are the artists from Crown Heights, like the older friends of 2605 that um, really got me into producing like heavily, heavily. Just, it, just like my own brand. Cause before I was pretty much kind of working like under Harry Fraud, like mm -hmm. kind of yeah, helping him out. I hadn't really made my own identity and Gloss Gang definitely, I attribute to like my first artist that I, I not my oh, first, yeah. but like some of the first artists that I ever really worked with and got my you know, that start from. So Vana, um, he was just on camera at some <laughs> point and said oh, it and it. I just ripped it from the camera and I just used it since then. Type shit, that's why it is. So yeah. um, it'd be a whole bunch of debates about what producers got fire tags. Who you feel like got some fire tags? Come on now. <laughs> we know what the answer to that is. Yeah, but like, of course you, but like, who else you think? <laughs> nah, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Eli, what the fuck, man. That's yeah. the that's the best tag. That's the tag that, that that's that's just the best tag. <laughs> um, I love Cash Cobain's tag. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't like tags really. So like, oh. I don't, I don't mean to, unless they're a good tag, mm. like Metro Boomin's tag. Like I don't put my tags on a lot of songs cause I don't, mm. I don't think it adds to the, to the drop or the anticipation every time. So I don't think it needs yeah. to be there. Every time. Yeah. Wow, that's honest. Some niggas be like, my tag is going. I don't give a fuck. No, I mean, I take pride in like my, my beats, like the tag. I mean, I love the tag, but um, just ta like I said, tags in general. It gotta be at a certain point in the. It's more than that. I think it just has to be like a tag that goes viral in itself. Like, mm -hmm. My tag is a Lau on the beat. It's not like saying a viral thing. It's just, look, bro is on the beat, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, but when it's like, and this beat from Cash, not from YouTube, it's like telling a little story or, you know, if you, if Young Metro don't trust you, I'm going, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, okay. though, that's what makes a tag like necessary on a song. Like mm. when, when the Metro tag drops, if Young Metro don't trust you, I'm going to shoot yeah. you. Beautiful morning. Yeah, it's yeah. like, such an important part of that record, yeah. you know? But if it was just like Metro Boomin' on the beat, it would have been like, we don't we didn't need that there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So So um so yeah. I mean, but how do you feel about collabs? Cause some people feel like when you collab with another producer, both y'all tags need to be on it. That's another thing too. Like that Jesus should be Christ. annoying, bro. Like that should be I, like I made a beat with uh Eli War and Turtle. <laughs> And Turtle put all of our tags back to back on it. And it's just like, there's no intro to the beat. It's just like, a Lau on the beat. Turtle, War, Eli. And then the beat drops. So it's like completely erases the entire. But then sometimes like, like if it's going to be some ignorant ass song, like sometimes <laughs> it's funny when it's like mad tags on it, you know, but it's, it's circumstantial for sure. Circumstantial for sure. All right, but so this is the 50th year of hip hop. Shit. You got the 50 cent shirt on right now. I do. So how you feeling about it being 50 years um, of hip hop? Um, how do I feel about it being 50 years of hip hop? Yeah, like especially being that, you know, you got to work with so many artists and you over 10 years in right now. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, the evolution of rap hip hop has definitely been like one of the more interesting stories in music um, across any genre of any time period, really. Um, and you know, I, I I just think that I just think that it does mark the fact that it's only gotten more popular and bigger. You know, unlike most other genres, is you know interesting to see what the what the next few years brings on. But I don't have a I don't have a I don't have a non-conventional right answer for it. Yeah, yeah. You just go with the flow. Um, how do you feel like producers could, I guess, contribute more to the evolution of hip hop? I know you said locking in the studio for sure. Yeah, like I yeah I feel like basically what we had covered before i think yeah. it's i think Pretty it's sure. um producer's job to want to like to want to push the boundaries and want to influence artists and you know have that kind of influence not be like an, an a social media influencer but to influence kind of behind the scenes the actual process of music you know type shit okay what advice would you give an upcoming producer just working their way up right now um, make a lot of beats and give a lot of beats away for free. Yeah. Okay. In the beginning. In the beginning, word. How do you feel about the whole Jersey Club shit? Is that annoying to you? I, I like to dance, so I like it. it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think it's cool. So no, no, um, no words for it. And then like... What, how are you feeling about like artists? I feel like, especially working in drill, we see a lot of artists go to jail so young or they pass so young. How are you feeling about like the drill artists? Are you talking to them when they come to the studio or? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I. You know, we could do as much as we could, but you know. Yeah, of course. I mean, I definitely, um, you know, it's a balance when you're a creative because 
you do want to have a good influence and obviously like I, 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 I do that where I can for sure. But mm -hmm. also at the same time, like your job is to facilitate um, an artist like creative process. Creative process yeah. It's it's not really to be like their therapist or their teacher Type or shit, yeah. or like some holier than thou kind of person. Yeah. And I think that when you do that, um, when you assume that position, like you can mess up the dynamic of being a, a producer and an artist, which is mm -hmm. what you're there to do. Um, I think when you become friends with an artist, yeah. you have responsibilities as a fr as friends as to be friend. good influences to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's important, it's important to just, um, to motivate your friends, you know, I still take, I, I talk to Kate Flock, um, you know, um, still, I still get to talk to him, he'll check up on him. Um, and I think, yeah, it's important to just, you know, to just, to just try to stay positive. Um, like to what you said earlier about, um, drill artists blowing up and getting caught up and stuff. It, it's mm -hmm. definitely a sad reality of blowing up in New York. It, it yeah. is like once you catch some some traction in New York, people are gonna be on your fucking dick. Yeah. And and it is something that it's like I do warn people like logically like be like move really really different once you blow up. You know like because yeah. people definitely watch. It's definitely a it's a crazy city like that for sure. I don't think there's any other city like it that that's like that. New York like is that. the worst, bro. Yeah, I don't think there's any city like it. Do you want to leave New York? No, I would leave. I could leave if I wanted to. I know, we're so <laughs> you got so much going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just I just think New York is is the best city. Like yeah. I, you know, if I, you know, if I get rich, rich one day, then I'll have another crib. You know, <laughs> love to have. Upward. Love to have you multiple go properties. Cali, Miami, some shit like that. No. Overseas. Like, no, like Long Island. Oh, this nigga really want to stay in the town. <laughs> they be like, some people be like, they want to leave. I could just go on vacation. Yeah, but you don't feel like you would live nowhere else. I, I, I could. Who knows? I, it's, it's like, um, to tell. it's insane for me to build so many networks of people. Like, I feel like I, I have so many networks of people just in New York right. that the idea of having, like, a else. real friend group in another place and then a real friend group over here would be hard to maintain. Hard to I'm, big on, I'm big on friendship. I like friends. Does your family, like, know about some of your big placements? Or because it's hip-hop, they're not really, like... Yeah, no, no. They're... they're the, they in tune? Yeah, my parents are oh, very, very loving, involved parents, so... That's what's up. I don't know about it, but like they're, yeah, they, they do they, they be do like, their you should work Googles. with such and such? No, no, they're not that. <laughs> no, they're not like, this person's blowing up. But <laughs> when I get like a, a placement or a plaque or something like that, they'll, yeah. they'll Google who it is or. Right, right, right. Oh, stuff, that's, that's, like that's that. fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. All right. So tell people where to find you. How could they tune in? Um, you can find me at Off Record because that is my studio. <laughs> um, and uh, my Instagram is. A L A U N Y, um, yeah. but more Should importantly, be. you can find me on a bunch of dope records coming out soon. <laughs> oh, can we know my one? Huh? On the way? Can we know my one on the way? Oh, y'all working that out still? Um, the only thing I can, the only one I can say right now is we, um, the video for Nobody, the Lil TJ Nobody video is okay. dropping on Tuesday, so definitely tune in for that. Okay. And then um, Two Six AR, I don't know when this is airing, so yeah. Two Six AR okay. is dropping tonight though, tonight, and the yeah, current like date that. is August seventeenth, so yeah. August eighteenth. We know you on that. Two Six AR <laughs> drops, yeah, heavy, heavy off record on that too, so. Thanks. Mm -hmm.